A handful of years ago, I became a full-time software engineer and I taught myself everything. And if I were going to start that process over today, this is the exact roadmap that I would take. So this is the the roadmap that I would take if I was a new developer starting out here in 2024. Now, this video, it's going to be someone focused on wanting to become a web developer or wanting to build user interfaces or kind of the what the user actually sees on the web page. This video is not going to be for someone that is more interested in learning about databases or machine learning or artificial intelligence. That's not my background, so I do not feel qualified to kind of go over that. But I'm a self-taught developer, so if you want to become a developer or work on the kind of front end of the application, building out user interfaces, what the user actually sees, then this video is going to be for you. So the first place that I would start if I was starting all over again and needing to teach myself to code again is I would, number one, learn just general programming basics. I think a great place to start with this is CS50. So Harvard puts out these web development courses on their YouTube channel for free. I think that you can also maybe go to cs50.com and follow along with it a little bit easier. And I believe all this is for free. I know their YouTube videos are for sure for free. And I would start there. CS50 is a great place to start to where you'll learn just some basics regarding web development, how the web works, as well as programming basics, you know, in-memory stuff and different things like that. So CS50 is a great place to start. And then after that, one course that I took on Coursera was called Django for Everybody. And this was basically just like also a basic programming course that taught Django. I still think that this is a good place to start, but I don't think you necessarily need to start with Django if you are looking to mostly start with web development. And the reason that I list this here is because this course was good about just teaching some good fun fundamentals about programming in a language that is fairly easy to learn, Python. Now, I, I don't think you necessarily need to go through this entire course. If you do CS50, I think that would be a good starting place for you to learn kind of the programming basics. But if you do CS50 and you feel like you need to learn a little bit more, then I think Django for Everybody is a good place to start. And I took that on Coursera. Now, after that, I would also make sure to learn the basics of how the web works. So a quick Google search will tell you how the web works. I know CS50 does cover this a bit, and CS50 also has courses on web development, which I also think are great. So I think that CS50, you know, if you start that and you still don't understand, you know, some programming basics and you feel like you need some more, then Django Forever, everybody would be good. And then if you also don't feel like you understand the basics of how the web works, then I would, you know, Google search how the web works and just watch some videos and quiz yourself. And that was like one of the biggest things that helped me learning when starting out. When you first start, you're going to be learning just like basic concepts of programming, computer science, different things like that, to where a lot of it is just conceptual. And when learning anything conceptual, I really like to make myself my own kind of study guides and quiz myself alongside the content. So when watching CS50, what I would do is while you're watching it, have a notebook out or maybe a Google Doc and write down questions that you think that you should know from watching the video. So for example, if they have a section of their video to where they talk about how memory works in a computer system, then I would write down questions on that notebook saying like on the left side of the notebook, I would say, okay, how does memory work in a computer system? And then on the right side of that notebook, I would write down the answer to that question. And then after you get maybe five to 10 questions, pause the video, cover up the answers and quiz yourself. Are you actually learning the material? And this helped me so much because I talked about this in my previous video, but one huge mistake I made is just rushing through content and not actually learning the material. I think it's going to be much more efficient and you're going to learn much quicker if you take the time to slow down, make yourself study guides, quiz yourself on the material and actually learn the material and go through it a bit slower because that's going to just provide a great foundation for you then to learn from. All right, so number one, the first thing I would do in this developer roadmap is learn the programming basics. And I think that you can do that with just CS50 
online with those free Harvard courses. But if that's not enough, Django for Everybody is a great place to start as well. And then just learning the basics, how the web works by just watching some YouTube videos and quizzing yourself and making yourself study guides. And then once you're done with that and you have a good grasp of the content in CS50, that's when I would then start to learn the basics of web development. So this is going to be HTML. HTML is basically the building blocks of the web. It's going to provide the structure to your web pages. So this is where you're going to put things like, okay, I'm going to have this element here that is for navigation. And that's where you might see it like the top of a web page where you can click on different links to navigate. So that might be within a HTML navigation element or nav element. And then from there, you'll learn about like, okay, a basic button element. So when a user clicks on this, you want to perform some action. So they click on it and maybe you want to submit a form. Well, you might do that with a button element that is of type submit, or you might use a form element so the user can fill out that form. This is just the general structure of the web. And then after that, I would learn CSS. So HTML is for the general structure of the web, but CSS is for making your web pages basically look, look more pretty. It's basically how you style your web pages. So HTML, you provide the structure. So like, okay, you can say, I have this form element to where the user can put in their email, their password, and their phone number, different things like that. But then you would use CSS if you wanted to like make that form a cool looking dark mode or you wanted the border of your inputs to be a like blue color to match a certain color scheme that you want. So CSS is where you're going to add different fonts, different colors, different layouts. All that stuff is handled with CSS and you will apply that CSS to your general structure, your HTML. So the HTML is a structure and then the CSS is used to basically make that HTML look decent and actually add some design to your web page. And then after learning CSS, I would then move on to JavaScript. So JavaScript is where you're going to add the functionality of your web page. So for example, if you have the HTML button, you might style that button with CSS to maybe make when they hover on that button, Maybe you change the background a little bit just to provide them some user feedback that they are indeed hovering over that button. But then when they click on that button, you're going to handle what happens then using JavaScript for the most part. So if they click on that button and you want to maybe show a pop-up modal, then you might handle the on-click event of that button with JavaScript to write a little bit of what is called logic. So just some, like if they do this, then do this. If they do this, then this. So they click on that button. You can say, okay, if the user is logged in, then maybe show them this modal that contains these details. But if they're not logged in, then maybe we just show them a modal saying, hey, you need to log in before you can see this information. And you would handle that logic and that interactivity in JavaScript. So the kind of core functionality of your page and what the user is going to be interacting with a page is largely going to be handled with JavaScript. The styling of your web page is going to be CSS. And then the general like root structure is going to be HTML. So I would learn these core fundamentals of web development. And CS50, it has like a web development course, which I also think is really good. I also have videos on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then I also use Udemy as well as Coursera and just looked for you know, up-to-date courses on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. But as you go through these courses, just make sure that you're, you know, making study guides, quizzing yourself, actually doing the practice problems, actually applying yourself. Don't just try to get through all the content as fast as you can. Really try to apply yourself and learn the material. And then once you learn the basics of programming, as well as the basics of web development, that's where I would move on to build your own web development beginner projects. So I would start by maybe just following a tutorial. I would look for something along the lines of vanilla JavaScript beginner tutorial or something like that. Once you find a tutorial that looks good to you, it looks interesting to you, then maybe you start by just following along with the tutorial, coding along with it to kind of see how they're putting everything together and applying the basic knowledge that, that you already have. But then once you kind of follow along with it, then start rebuilding that tutorial by yourself. So 
in the tutorial, let's say they build this kind of starter project in the course of, you know, 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Well, once you kind of code along and you see how they do it and you kind of practice it with them once, go back, build the tutorial all by yourself. If you hit issues, go, you know, Google search, problem solve, figure out what you're doing and running into those problems is really what's going to help you learn and apply the knowledge that you learn in the first couple steps. And then after you build the tutorial yourself, I'll build, you know, one or two projects of your own that just interest you. So if you really want to just build, I don't know, a to-do list or that's, that's like the generic beginner project to build. If you want to build like your own project that interests you, I'll then go do that. And then once you feel generally pretty comfortable with the basics of web development and you're able to build your, your own tutorials or your own projects with just HTML, CSS, and vanilla JavaScript, that's where I would learn some sort of framework. Now, I personally would learn React.js. So React is a library that makes it a bit easier to build user interfaces with JavaScript, which is also a reason why it's really important to still learn JavaScript first, because these frameworks that you're going to hear of, so React.js, Vue, Svelte, Angular, all these are kind of libraries or frameworks that just provide general structures for you and some different kind of helper functions to allow you to build these user interfaces using JavaScript. So all these libraries still rely heavily on JavaScript knowledge and React in particular, it's mostly just JavaScript. Like you'll probably hear React is just JavaScript at the end of the day. And you know, that's, that's true to a degree, but there are some like extra stuff that you need to learn with React, which uh, I'm sure you'll, you'll get used to here after a little bit. But after learning the basics of web development, that's when I would learn on to learning React. And the reason I say this is because, well, for one, I, that's what I did. And so I have practical experience with that. And to this day, React has a ton of job opportunities. It's been around for a long time. It's not going anywhere. It's not like the, the new technology on the block. These days, like there's a lot of companies that use React. There's going to be a lot of companies that use React in the future. Companies are still choosing it as their technology to this day. So I think it's a great framework for you to start with. And then, hey, down the road, if you want to learn a different JavaScript library, you can totally do that with your knowledge of React. After you learn the basics of web development, it is so much easier to pick up a kind of framework or tool or library like React, Vue, different things like that. But I would start with React. And then for learning React, I would kind of first watch a, a few video overviews of just kind of what React is and kind of how it fits into a tech stack and kind of just get an overview of how it works. So I have videos on this. I think like it's called what is React and I have a full course on React. I have crash courses on React. I of course think my YouTube channel is a great resource for learning React. So I think that would be a good place to start, but there's a lot of good creators out there and a lot of good tutorials on React. But I would start with just gaining a general overview of what React is and kind of what it does. And then after you do that, I think another good place to go to is going to the React docs. So this is at react.dev forward slash learn. I would go through the docs cover to cover and I would do the same thing that I recommended earlier when learning the kind of programming basics making your own study guides, quizzing yourself on the material, and really trying to learn the knowledge rather than just getting through it as fast as you can. So on the docs, make sure to make yourself study guides, quiz yourselves, and really try to apply the knowledge that you're learning and really kind of test your recall of the knowledge that you're kind of newly acquiring. And then once you do that, there is a kind of a starter project on the React docs that they have. I would also follow that. And then once you do that, then I would, you know, maybe go through a full course, a free course on YouTube or Udemy. I, of course, have courses on these, but hey, you can kind of choose whatever you want to do there. And I would start by kind of following along with the tutorial, just like what you did with kind of building vanilla JavaScript projects. Start by kind of following along with the tutorial to see how they build stuff in React. And then after that, build stuff on your own or build that tutorial on your own. So if they do a project building a kind of beginner to do app in React, and 
I would also suggest starting with beginner projects. I would not try to jump into like a, you know, 12 hour full stack React project where you build a entire like Twitter clone. I think that's going to be a bit above your head as you're starting out. Just look for beginner projects in React, follow along with the tutorial at first, but then make sure to rebuild it after the fact. And then once that occurs, then start building your own projects that actually interest you. And then once you have a good grasp on computer science fundamentals and web development fundamentals and React fundamentals, and you can actually build your own projects, then I would build out a couple of portfolio projects with both vanilla JavaScript as well as React.js. And I would display these projects on like your own website that you also create. So you have a resource for when you start applying for jobs that they can go look at your projects that you've built. And for me personally, I also created like video demonstrations of my projects, kind of explaining what I did. And I kind of connected those to my videos on my website. After you can build your own projects in vanilla JavaScript as well as React, this is where you're pretty much ready to start applying for jobs. And I would start studying some kind of basic front end interview questions. If you are planning to kind of work at more of a startup or smaller company, I probably wouldn't worry about the kind of data structures and algorithms questions as often startups and smaller companies don't ask those questions. They ask questions more along the lines of like, how do you build a button in React? Or just kind of common front end interview questions that you can find on the internet and that you can actually practice for and study for. And they tend to ask questions more along the lines of JavaScript, React, and CSS. Now, if you're wanting to get a front end developer job at like a larger tech company, so like Google, Amazon, Facebook, Slack, Salesforce, one of these larger companies, they're going to ask you data structure and algorithm questions most likely. So at this point, this is where I would start studying those as well. If you want to go that route. Personally, I don't really feel like it's worth it. And I work for a startup and absolutely love it. But a lot of people have different things that they like and different things that they prefer. But if you're at the point where you're just going to work for a startup or smaller company to get started at like a more of a, a junior position, then I would just study basic front-end interview questions on JavaScript, React, CSS, and HTML, and then start applying for jobs. If you want to go the larger company around and really take your shot at that right away, this is where I would learn in the data structure and algorithm questions. So I used algoexpert.io to do that, and I'm not affiliated with that website in any way, but I thought it was a really good kind of resource for that. And I, I think that resource also has different front end questions as well. That would probably be good even if you're working or wanting to work at a smaller company or startup. But here at step six, this is where I would really start doing kind of your, your interview preparation after you've learned the fundamentals of programming, React, and web development. And then from there, I would start applying for front end engineer and developer jobs. So this can look like React developer, it can look like JavaScript developer, it might say UI engineer, it might say front end engineer. I think all of these can be used like synonymously with each other to where they're all going to be a similar thing. But I'll probably focus on ones that include React.js in their job description. And they kind of say that, hey, we, we use React.js. This is kind of what we're looking for. And then from there, it took me hundreds of applications before getting one job interview as well as one job offer. I got an offer for that interview. So just know that it's probably going to take you applying to a lot of jobs if you're completely self-taught and you don't have a lot of like connections in the space to get a job. My approach was just applying for a ton of jobs that looked interesting to me and then hoping that someone would take a shot on me. And eventually someone did and I did a really good job in that interview and was able to land that job. So that's kind of the approach I would recommend as well. I think that's probably the most straightforward approach. Now you could also tailor your resume for every single job interview. I personally didn't do that as it's hugely time consuming, but that's another really solid approach that that can help. Don't get discouraged if you apply for hundreds of jobs and you get like one or two interviews with hundreds of applications. That's literally what it was for me. Hang in there. You will eventually get that shot. And hey, you know, even if you don't get that first offer on that first job, don't be discouraged. More offers will indeed come. So 
to me, this is the complete web developer roadmap in 2024. So thank you so much for tuning into this. Best of luck with learning to code. Make sure to check out other videos on my channel that I can help you out with, with some of these things that I mentioned here. So thanks for tuning into this. Best of luck to you, and I'll see you in that next one.